Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Welcome back to the channel. Super excited to be doing another quad build and another frame test. This time around, I've got this guy. It's the Rotor Village Small Yeet 35 version 2, much improved from the version 1. And on paper, this frame looks pretty amazing. It is a 3.5 inch super light frame. To give you an idea, the frame with TPU mounts should weigh about 51 grams. That's even lighter than my recently tested 2.5 inch from Quadmulla. So if that's true, this should allow us to get down to sub 250 gram weights very, very easily. Rotor Village also sent me these props. I asked them to send me whatever props they recommend. So they sent me Gemfan 3.5 by 2 by 3 and I'm liking this yellow color. And finally, they sent me a bunch of battery straps. So depending on the size of the battery, you can use different sizes, which is great to see. Out of the first bag, we have a second bag with all the carbon parts and screws. We have the TPU parts and they do make these TPU parts available for your own printing, which I love to see that in 2023. And they've also given us another battery strap. This looks very small, but we'll see if this is the right size for us or not. And the way they've done the 3D prints, they've got these little nubs holding these together. So that's quite clever. And we have the arms, so they have included five arms and you can tell they are symmetrical. They did remove one of these holes and what they tell me is this is to actually make it a lot stronger. We've got the bottom brace and we have the lock for the arms. We've got the bottom deck and this actually looks quite a bit shorter than I expected. And then we've got the top deck and so far I'm finding this to be a no frills, no gimmick kind of frame. And I am finding that the edge of the carbon is a little bit sharper than I'm used to. And I am seeing a bit of black marks on my finger. They give you 20 millimeter standoffs and 15 millimeter standoffs. So you can choose based on your build. And these are the good old fashioned knurled standoffs. Then we've got two bags of big screws, two bags of little screws, and finally some nuts. So this does not come with stack screws, does not come with screws for the O3. So you do have to source some of those screws yourself. I will give you links in the video description to all these parts and the frames all put together. Probably the easiest frame I've assembled in a very, very long time. The most difficult part of this is figuring out which of the arm lock options you wanna go with. So you can see there's a little piece of carbon here. So that actually locks the arms together. So your first option is, do you go with that one? Or do you go with these screws? So these screws here go through a little hole in the arm. Or like me, do you go with both? So if you go with both, these screws, these four screws plus the four nuts will add about 1.2 grams to the whole weight. I swapped out these four arm screws because I like to really cinch these down and I ended up stripping one of them. Okay, moment of truth, let's do some weighing. The frame with just the camera mount TPU is 51 grams, perfect as advertised. Add in the SpeedDB F7 all-in-one, 61 grams, capacitor, 63 grams, power cable, 66, antenna for the O3, I'm gonna use my little singularity. Then we've got the lightened and mutilated O3. 89, add in four of the Zing 2 1404, 4600 kV motors. I've got the screws in there as well, 133 grams. I'm gonna use the medium size battery strap, 136. Then I've got my Express LRS receiver. This is a Happy Model EP2. It does not have an external antenna. 137. The four gem fan props, I've got the adapter in there already. 145. At 145, we have battery choices. Usually I run this battery here. It's a GMB 650 four cell. If I add that one in, we're at 215. Or I can run the same battery, but a 6S. Ooh, and with this battery, we're just under 250 grams. Now, once I add TPU and these kind of things, we may have to shave off one or two grams. All the electronics are now installed. Working on the frame was straightforward. The only thing you have to be prepared for is that you do require additional screws and parts. So for example, these stack screws does not come with the frame. These plastic nuts do not come with the frame. The tiny screws here to mount the O3 do not come with the frame. And then finally, 
Although the frame does come with mortar screws, you can see that the screws are a little bit too tall for my mortars. They poke through right there. At the back, it's fine, but at the front, I had to use shorter screws. I mounted the Speedy B all-in-one flight controller in this orientation, power coming out the front. I also had a very small capacitor, smaller than the one that I came with. It's a 220, 35 volt. Just get a smaller version. The other thing to bear in mind is that the wire that comes with the O3 is not long enough to reach all the way here for the power. So I run this off VBAT. So I had to extend out that wire a little tiny bit there. And then if you are using this flight controller, make sure you check out my review of it because you have to make sure you don't use R1 and T1. So you can see how I've got this wired here. I also did do some remixing of the TPU mounts. I created my little antenna here. So all in all, it's looking fairly good. And it's time for the first power up. One, two, three, please don't explode. Okay, I see a reassuring blue light. I see receiver flashing, Mr. O3 is on. For ultimate weight savings, I removed that tiny press nut that was here. I'm not running a GoPro on this. So that saved me a whopping 0.3 grams. Let's do the final weight check, quad by itself, 143. If we go with our 4S650, 212, we can use the small strap with this battery, 213 ready to go. Now, if we go with the 6S650, let's see what happens. 247, ooh, so we still have a couple of grams of margin. We will need the larger of the battery straps though. So now we're at uh, 251. Okay, so we're gonna have to find one or two grams. My thinking is, if I go with props that have smaller hubs, so you can see the gem fans have this huge hub and the insert. And if that doesn't help, we could remove one of these arm locking options. I went ahead and I purchased a pair of the HQ 3.5 by 2.5 by three props. Now, if we do a weight check, we are at 145. Let's add in the 6S battery. And now we are at 249. So bingo, we've done it. Now, if we go and remove one screw from each mortar, we can even put on our ND filter and still be under 250 grams. The flight footage you're looking at here is the raw 4K 60 FPS footage from either the goggle recording or the air unit onboard recording without any stabilization. So I don't have the DJI EIS turned on and I also did no software stabilization. This is the raw footage with just some color correction. For this flight, I'm using the Jamfan props, the neon yellow ones, and the four cell battery pack. Even though the first day out was quite windy, I found that the small yeast flew beautifully and it handled that wind very well. So it was rock steady. Unfortunately, you can see the tips of the props in view, but thankfully only in the goggle recording. When I look at the area onboard recording in normal FOV, no props and no frame in view, which is amazing. The lightweight nature of the frame and the larger 3.5 inch props did catch me off guard a little bit. It had a lot more thrust and full power punch out than I expected, causing me to overshoot a lot of my tricks. As usual, I went ahead and I did a full pit tune using Pit Toolbox, which is how I do all of my pit tuning nowadays. What you're seeing on the screen is the pit tune I landed on for my four cell setup. Based on my type of flying, which is mild freestyle, I got a little bit over four minutes of flight. It was a chilly day, so I think you probably can get four and a half to maybe 4.45 on a normal kind of day. For the second day of testing, I'm using the HQ props, and now the quad is flying the way that I'm used to. It's less twitchy and easier to control the altitude than the jam fan props from day one. I didn't notice either prop being quieter or louder than the other. They were very comparable from the noise department. I did notice that on full throttle punch outs, the HQ used more amps. So the HQ pulled a maximum of 52 amps, whereas the Gem Fan pulled a maximum of 48 amps. Total flight time was comparable and managed a bit over four minutes and a half for the HQ props, so not too much different. I'm actually finding that this quad has too much power. Yes, who knew you could have that kind of problem, but I'm actually tempted to drop the motor limit from 100% and beta flight down to 90%, just to make it a bit more comparable to my Quad Mola 3 inch, because right now I'm just having a difficult time switching between those two quads. 
For those of you flying 4x3 aspect ratio, I did do a test with 4x3. Thankfully, no props or frame in view in the onboard recording, and just a bit of the props in view in the goggle recording, same as the experience with the 16x9. And finally, I tested with ultra wide, and you can see a good amount of props and a bit of the top deck in view, so not a very good experience for those of you using ultra wide. On the third and final day of testing, I'm using the 6S 650 milliamp battery pack. I'm using my typical 4600 kV motors, which of course is too high for a 6S, but I've gone ahead and I've set a motor limit of 66% in beta flight to bring these down to more 6S suitable kV. All the footage you are seeing is from the goggle recording, so you can keep an eye on the amp draw along with the average cell voltage of each cell. The first thing I noticed on the 6S setup is that with full throttle punch outs, we're only pulling a maximum of 37 amps versus 52 on the 4S. So that's about 40% less with the 6S battery. That's quite surprising. Of course, more voltage would equal less amps, but 40%, that's quite a lot. Flight performance wise, the 6S felt very similar to the 4S, except that the per cell voltage was a lot more stable. And on hard moves, the pack didn't sag as much as the 4S did. Even at the very end of the pack, I did a full throttle punch out and it delivered more consistent uh, performance throughout the entire flight. Ultimately, I got about five minutes and 30 seconds on the flight, which is a minute more than I got with the 4S. This wraps up the flight testing. Hope you liked this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment.